Number three is actually kind of a kind of interesting one. This is probably one that most of you have some familiarity with, but I wouldn't be surprised if most of you get it wrong uh, as a as a question because the technical way that you talk about it is actually kind of odd, um, and it's sort of a useful way of understanding it. Once you understand why it's called what it is or why it's uh, used the way it is, then it all kind of logically makes sense. But um, it's, it can seem a little uh, odd in, in the process. So, okay, three. Which of the following is the best description of a mechanics lean? Uh, so, mechanics lean. Well, let's just first dispense with D. Let's take a look at D. A warranty issued directly to an owner by a vendor of mechanical equipment. Mechanics lean has nothing to do with mechanical equipment. It doesn't have anything to do with anything uh, actually mechanical, in fact. Um, I, uh, you know, I knew one time what it, uh, where the word mechanics came from. I actually don't remember anymore. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's more about the idea of the lean than it is about anything else. Uh, and so it's not about uh, anything about mechanical equipment or anything like that. Uh, what a mechanics lean is, is let's say you're a plumber and you've done uh, $100,000 worth of work on a project and uh, you, the GC is pushing you to do more work and you're saying, well, you know, I need to get paid first. We're 100 grand in here and the GC says, no, I'm not going to pay you. Uh, and so you stop working and then the GC just goes and gets another plumber. Um, so what do you do if you're that plumber? How do you, how do you, you know, if the GC is not going to pay you, like how do you get anybody to notice that you need to be paid that $100,000? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to file a mechanics lien, and you're going to put that mechanics lien on the uh, the deed. You're going to go down to like the county courthouse or something like that, and you're going to put that lien onto the project, onto the site, onto the building. Uh, you know, some form. It's, it doesn't have to be a finished project. It doesn't have to be an actual building. It can be just the property. Uh, and uh, you're essentially saying, wait, before anything else can happen, um, I am owed $100,000. So, okay, let's look at A and B as possible uh, answers. So A, a lawsuit to collect money for construction work performed to improve a property. That sounds pretty much like what I just said, right? Uh, let's look at B, an ownership interest in a piece of property to the extent of construction work performed to improve it. Well, A certainly sounds right, but it's actually not right. Uh, a mechanics lien is not a lawsuit. Uh, it is, in fact, a way of saying for that, that plumber is essentially saying when they put the mechanics lien on, I didn't get paid $100,000. I should have been paid. Uh, I'm therefore claiming $100,000 worth of ownership of this project. Now, that seems sort of funny because it's like, well, where does that get you? Like, you're, the, you're that plumber. Like, so what? You put a piece of paper out in the county courthouse. Like, what does that mean? Well, it turns out it's actually really handy uh, if you're that, uh, if that plumber because uh, there's all sorts of times when, let's say, you're doing a construction loan. Well, as soon as you go from construction loan to, to translating it into a regular mortgage or as soon as the developer is trying to sell it to the new tenant or any, any uh, interaction with a bank or with the state or with anybody, uh, they're going to take a look and make sure that it's a clean deed. And if there's a lien on the deed, they're going to stop the process. And so this is a very uh, useful way of letting the, the, the little guy, in this case the plumber, uh, be able to sort of stop a million-dollar project, $200 million project, because they're owed the $100,000. So B is the correct answer. The mechanics lien is a way to, to claim ownership interest in a project to the extent of the work that you've done uh, to improve it. And then, uh, presumably, before anything can actually happen to that uh, project, before it can get sold again or, uh, you know, go through uh, any other sort of legal uh, process, somebody has to clear, clear, the, clear the lien. So the owner is going to go back to the GC and say, hey, what the heck's going on here? you got you to gotta clear this thing off, and then the GC is going to have to pay the contractor, the, the uh, plumber. Um, or maybe the GC runs away, but whatever, uh, the plumber's got to get paid. So the, the owner then has to make a deal with the, with the plumber. Somebody's got to find a way to make that work. Uh, so three, uh, the correct answer is B. Which Vanessa got right. Very good. Excellent job. So did uh, Matt and... Uh, Looks like Megan thought it was A. 
Yeah, A is a sort of a totally reason. That's what almost everybody would would answer if they haven't uh, haven't dealt with it before. Uh, but it actually is B. Um, the thing you probably have dealt with a great deal is the waiver of lien, um, and that's when uh, you're you ask to be paid, um, and uh, the you know whoever the, the title company or the owner or whoever comes up and hands you a check, and with one hand they're handing you a check, and with the other hand you should be handing them. Uh, a waiver of lien, and what you're essentially saying with the waiver of lien is, I am waiving my right to put a lien on your project uh, for this amount of money because you just handed me a check. Uh, so that allows them, so you, you get the check and you walk away with your check. Uh, if you didn't give them a waiver of lien, then you could then go put a mechanics lien on, and they would have no way of proving it. You'd have to wait for the check to clear, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so waivers of lien are sort of part of this process, and that's probably something you've run into before. Hey, while we're here, uh, going back to question number two, Francesca had a great uh, question. She said um, that the, she was sort of a question, the architect only inspects at substantial and final completion. Uh, the architect does not periodically inspect. Is that correct? Um, actually, that's a very good question, um, and it's too specific to the situation to really be able to answer. Um, so, uh, in, a, in, in the vast majority of, of the kinds of projects that the exam is really talking about, something like a, uh, you're doing a high school or you're doing a, a small library or something like that, um, the inspections, if you will, inspections are really is probably a little too strong a word. It's probably more sort of visits. Um, the visits are probably monthly, um, maybe every two weeks. Sometimes if it's a really complicated project, it might be every week. If it's a seriously complicated project, you might actually have somebody who stays on site and they're there every day. Um, so uh, it can be all kinds of different uh, sets of relationships. And if you're doing something that's like a single family home and it's for somebody who's built stuff before, uh, kind of with you in, in the past, you might do it at, uh, you know, at rough in and then at uh, um, you know, drywall and then at, you know, like at sort of key milestones. So it doesn't have to be like weekly or monthly, but it depends on the scale of the project and the needs of the, of the client. Um, but the, the standard built into the contract is that you are there at a set period, uh, periodically that would be defined in the contract. So you, maybe you say six visits, or maybe you say monthly visits, or uh, something that would get defined as part of, a, uh, part of that contract. Uh, one question here, though. Yep. Jake goes back to, I believe, question three, and he wants to confirm. So a waiver of lien would happen before a contractor placed a mechanics lien on a property. Is that correct? No, the waiver, well, yes, but uh, a, a waiver of lien is, um, uh, so let, let's say that particular example of the plumber who was 100 grand in, um, they say, hey, you got to pay me the 100,000, and the GC says, okay, here's a check for 100,000. Before he, or in the process of handing over the check for the 100,000, the plumber is going to give the GC a waiver of lien, uh, which is going to say, all right, you're paying me the 100 grand, I can't. I will not, I, I am promising that I will not try to put a mechanics lien for this $100,000 onto this property because you've just given me the check. So I've been, I've been paid, I'm waiving my right to put a lien on it for this moment, for this amount, on this situation. So that's a waiver of lien, and then you'll often also see a final waiver of lien, which is where you say, okay, yes, I've been paid all the way through everything, project's done, and I'm, I've been paid everything I was owed, so I'm giving you my final waiver of lien, therefore I will not put, I'm, I'm waiving my right to put uh, a mechanics lien onto this project. And that's a way that everybody kind of keeps, the, keeps track and makes sure everybody's on target. Okay. Good question. What you're essentially saying if you're filing a mechanics lien is, I didn't get paid, so therefore I am claiming uh, the ownership interest of the amount that I didn't get paid uh, out of this property. So uh, I, I now say that I am a part owner of this because I never got paid for the work that I put into it. That's what a mechanics lien is, and waiver of lien is saying, no, no, everything's fine, I'm not gonna do that. Thank you, Mike, uh, and thanks to all of you who've tuned in, and if you'd like to attend our next ARE live broadcast, visit blackspectacles.com slash podcast to register. Uh, you'll have a chance to ask questions and share your answers with Mike for live feedback during the broadcast, just like today. Um, and to learn more about our AIA 
ARE prep curriculum, go to blackspectacles.com. Uh, we'll uh, include, a note, uh, include a link in the show notes. Uh, and for those of you who are ready and, and want to go ahead and get busy preparing for the ARE, uh, you can use a coupon, uh, a 15% coupon off the first charge on any AIA ARE prep membership with code 527-1515-WEBINAR. That's 527-15-WEBINAR. Uh, and that'll expire on June 15th. Um, and of course, if you're already an AIA member, you can visit AIA.org slash ARE prep to get a 30% discount for the entire duration of your AIA ARE prep membership, not just the first charge. Um, and that also uh, expires on June 15th. Um, and finally, uh, please leave a comment below the video to let us know what you think um, and share any suggestions um, that you may have. I promise uh, we'll read every word that you write and use them to tune our next episodes. Uh, so thanks for watching.